Have you ever tried to get anyone to help you move? Friends. Well, you would have to know people. I don't, I don't know those kind of people. The people I know aren't physically capable of moving boxes. It's a whole thing that you owe them stuff or you buy them lunch. There's some exchange of, of services to which they're amateur at in exchange for food, which is why you're not paying them. Steve Wonder here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at exporting and possibly migrating your entire Intune tenant, if that's what you want to do. Let's leave my friends out of this. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about moving devices between tenants um, from Intune to Intune, but obviously if you, um, uh, let's make a new window here. Obviously, if you have an Intune environment and you are going to migrate stuff from one tenant to another, uh, you need to move the tenant first in the settings. So you have a few options, right? You can rebuild from scratch, right? Just kind of look at your policies side by side. But I mean, what you know, you might have a lot of policies, right? And um, like, let's take a look at my my setup here. And uh, if we just look at the Windows side, right? configuration profiles i have quite a few 19 policies it says um some compliance policies i i know i have some scripts in here uh those are remediation scripts i have my platform scripts not to mention the the applications and autopilot settings so you know the bottom line is there's a lot there's a lot of stuff here so how would you move all of it um so as we know, we've talked about the Microsoft graph before and everything is in the graph on the back end, but I wanna show you a fantastic tool um, that's known as the Intune Management uh, with PowerShell and, and WPF UI, right? Um, so it's you know part of a great GitHub repo. Um, I've been following this for a while. Um, definitely gonna butcher the name, so I'm not even gonna bother, but definitely check out um, definitely uh, check out the, the repo here and I'll put the links to this below. This is a fantastic tool. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at it. And what's really nice is this has, um, I mean, really a lot of stuff, but it's got this fun little uh, GUI interface here that allows you to uh, basically, you know, move stuff around. So I'm gonna take you through it. Like I said, I'll put the link below, uh, but let's take a look at how it works and, and some of the pieces here, right? Um, so I'm going to go back to, um, so I went ahead and downloaded it. Okay. So I'm going to open up the directory that we downloaded and there's a whole bunch of stuff in here for lack of a better term. But what's really nice is we can just go to the start with app CDM, CMD. I don't know why I said CDM. And what this is going to do is it's going to open up this, uh, GUI interface to work with these, uh, scripts for us and close some other things. So the first thing we need to do is we need to uh we're gonna need to sign in so the top right we can see uh there's essentially a little login icon and that's for our that's our oauth all right so i'm gonna go ahead and click the log on there and i'm already logged in with uh, steve capacity on the machine so it's going to retrieve that token uh or didn't retrieve the token it's making me authenticate again that's fine and now I'm logged in, so you can see my user. I pulled in my profile picture. So let's uh, browse around here. So let's go to, um, let's see what we got here. Device configuration. These are all my device configuration policies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, and then the software update ones. Uh, feature update, no. Where are the update policies? Um, update policies there's the other the other two right there um so what else do we have we have um we scroll up here we have administrative templates so this is any policy we set as an admx any admx files we've ingested we didn't um if we look at our applications this is everything that's up there which is you know really cool if we had co-management settings um, let's look at autopilot. It's going to have our autopilot profiles, um, any policy sets we have. We don't actually have any of those enrollment restrictions. We do have the, um, the two, the one that blocks, uh, the personally owned. This is our enrollment status page. So we can, uh, we can see this if I want to click on this and, uh, let's view it. 
I can get the JSON view, right? Um, now, what's really nice is if I want to document any of this, I can. So if I click that and hit document, I'll put type, uh, let's do uh, HTML, policy separator, that's fine, start. And uh, this just made a uh, HTML file for me that I can look at and I'll put my settings. So obviously if you had a, you want to do this and, and, and build documentation for your whole tenant, you can. So this is a very powerful tool here, being able to do it like that. But what we want to look at today is how we export all this. So what I want to do is I would like to bulk export. So what do I want to export? I want to export everything, okay? In, in the tenant. Um, now here, if we hover over, oh, I missed it there. Okay. Um, so you have an option to attempt to export the application file as well. So we're gonna try that. Um, but here we go. So I'm gonna run this and this is gonna grab everything in the tenant. And now let's take a look at our options up here. So we have the root folder where exported files will be stored. So let's go ahead and create something. I'm gonna put mine in C and I'm gonna create a folder called uh, Intune Tenant Export. And I'm gonna select that folder. Okay, a name filter. Um, this will essentially allow us to filter out, but we're not doing that. So let me go ahead and hit export. Now I'm logged in as a GA, so I should have no problem uh, permissioning this. Uh, there's a few ways this handles authentication. Uh, we can get to that, you know, later. If you want to look at the README in there below, it's a, you know, plenty of information. But right now, it's essentially going through my whole tenant and creating an export. And the export is all the same format you would get, like I showed you before, in JSON. That's what's in the Microsoft Graph. So this is going to allow you to import this to another tenant. All right, so that looks like it completed. Let's close. Let's go see where this uh, where this ended up. So I called it uh, Intune Tenant Export, Steve Capacity, so it named the folder there. And if we look at everything else, Windows 365 provisioning policies. This is the JSON of my provision policy. Cool. It's amazing. Um, now, he, here's the thing. Here's what you can do with this. So we have an export of all this. So what does that mean? That means if I were to, I'm going to change this here, sign in with a different account. I'm going to go back to the Rubix dev, GrooveMaster at RubixDev.com. Okay, so it's now logged me in. Right, so now that I'm in Rubix dev, I want to go ahead and um, I'm going to go down to my Windows 365 provisioning policies and i would like to import so in order to do this in this section i'm going to hit import and uh i just yep it already found it because it's pointing at the folder so it's going to import the default windows 365 cloud pc join now i can import the assignment and scope tags as well i'm gonna leave the uh assignment out i want to sign it myself but let's go ahead and do that so that did not take very long. So if I go back now to that tenant, get rubixdev.com, uh, devices, I should have two provisioning policies now. Provisioning policy, take a look at that. Boom, and I can do the others as well and import them should have everything the same there and it should be unassigned yep that's the naming convention from steve capacity no assignments because i didn't do that real easy i can do other policies that way as well i could do multiple ones if we look at um let's see configuration profiles here um you see how annoying it is going back and forth um you know trying to see what you have and what you don't one thing you can do is I'm gonna kind of show you here. I'm gonna click bulk and compare. So I wanna compare Intune objects with exported files. Okay. 
So it's going to compare this tenant against the source that I exported, against the export root. Okay, so you see it gave me, it added something to my source, a compare CSV. So, ooh, let's look at this in, let's look at this in Excel, actually. This is open with. Okay, so it turned out for some weird reason, I did not have Excel installed on this machine. Um, so as opposed to taking the time and doing that, I improvised, got you some, opened up Google Sheets and uh, figured it'd be the same to show. So if we look at um, the data that comes out, so if you're looking, for example, at this uh, policy, right? Um, does it match? No, it's false. But then we can scroll down and look at ones that do match. So for example, if we have, um, you know, multi-factor authentication policy, and they're the same, you can see our Windows Hello for Business was the same. Um, it just kind of goes through everything we have and tells you what matches and what doesn't. So you could essentially filter out and you could say, I want to see everything that, that does not match. And, uh, it, I put the falses at the top so you can see we, we don't have any of these in the other tenant under applications. So that gives us a place to start. And then you can see here, the applications we have in the, um, you know, in the other tenant, right? So. This is a great way to compare and determine what you need. Um, if you do have two tenants, maybe one was half built and the other wasn't. So um, great, great comparison here to look at everything. Great way to do it. So that was a brief overview of the Intune Management PowerShell tool. Again, uh, the link is below. Check it out. It's very easy to use. Um, it's very good just to see what you have, maybe in a very consolidated view. And, and sometimes it's, it's even quicker than Intune. So definitely give it a shot. Obviously, the the application of using it, uh, you know, the potential is amazing. Um, but yeah, when we talk about migration, it's nice to know that there's also a way to migrate um, the content of the tenant as opposed to the devices. So yeah.